Welcome to the first video in a series uh, that I'll be doing on how to make a lemon peel baseball. This first video, uh, I, I tried it once before and when I was doing that I was kind of changing the way I was making the ball so I ended up starting over. So um, we're going to try this again. Uh, this first video we're going to cover the materials that you're going to need to make a lemon peel baseball. You can see here on the dining room table I've got I think everything that I would need um, and when we get into each uh, subsequent video uh, where we use these materials I'll cover them in a little more in depth as to what we're going to do with them but for now I just kind of want to show you uh, the materials that that you're going to need and I'll just go uh, start here with the leather and just kind of work my way around the table uh, to that side and then back around so what you see here are three different types of leather and the bottom piece here um, is a pretty thin piece of leather. I would consider that something like maybe they would call a three pound piece of leather. It's not going to hold up very well uh, it, during a game. Um, the, the leather is so thin and when you punch the holes in it uh, over time those holes are going to bust open. Uh, and, but, they, but this leather works great. Um, it works great for like a trophy ball. Something you just want to present to somebody. Maybe you're going to autograph it um, and just display it. It looks really nice with that dark leather. Uh, the, the next piece, again, it's a darker piece of leather, uh, but it's a little thicker, and this is closer to a, a four or five pound piece of leather. I'll try and hold these things next to each other so you can kind of see the difference. I'm not sure if that's showing up or not, but um, this is a little heavier piece of leather. It uh, doesn't have much flex to it. You can see this one just hangs down. When I pull this one over, it doesn't go down nearly as far. It's a much stiffer piece of leather, and that'll hold up better for a baseball if you like the, the darker covers. I think they use these this color mostly probably in the 1857 to 1859 time frame, maybe some in 1860. Uh, but if you like the darker leather color balls, uh, this would be a decent piece of leather to use. It's got some good thickness. Uh, it's not going to stretch a lot, um, so it's a little harder to work with, but it's, it does look nice. In this piece, it's a smaller piece here now that I've cut around, but um, this is the leather that uh, I use for my baseballs. And so it's got the qualities of this leather where it's it's a little easier to work with it's got more flexibility but it's got the thickness of this darker leather so you can see if I hold this up you can see they're they're similar matter of fact the light one might be even a little bit thicker but it's got very good flexibility you can see it it's real soft uh, I can feel it you can't see it that's real soft and supple leather easy to work with it's got some stretch to it so if the cover needs to stretch a little bit to get on you can do that uh, I, I get this, uh, actually the, our team manager gets this through Tandy Leather. It's a Tanner's hide, a Tanner's, Tanner's chap hide uh, from Tandy Leather. Real nice. Um, as far as the materials go, the leather by far is going to be the most expensive piece of the baseball. Uh, we buy it by the hide. Uh, I guess it's a half of a hide, you know, in the neighborhood of... $280 and we'll get about 50 to 60 baseballs out of it. Uh, so you can see um, it, it tends to be the, by far the most expensive part of the baseball. So you really want to be picky with your leather and make sure you get it right. If you've got a local leather store, you can go down and try it. They usually have samples pretty cheap. You can sample a few pieces and see how the ball works out. But leather is the number one thing you're going to need. The next thing might seem a little odd to you, but it's a calculator. And a, uh, and a piece of paper and something to draw with. Uh, what you want to do here is build the pattern for your baseball. And you're going to need to know a little math, how the math works, and a, a calculator that does square roots. Because this is where we bring in the Pythagorean theorem. And you can see here, I've kind of drawn an example. Uh, I know from this point, if you can see my finger, to this point is going to be the circumference of the baseball. And per the Beatles dime rule book, we know based on the year you play what that maximum and minimum circumference should be. They usually give you a range. Uh, for example, in 1860, they want the ball to be between 9 and 3 quarters inches and 10 inches uh, in circumference. And so that's the range you're working with. So you want to start with this. And with the Pythagorean theorem of this squared plus this squared equals this squared, you can calculate the side of that square as well draw the square and then build your template inside of that. And we'll cover that a little more in depth when we get there, but it's good to have a calculator uh, that does square roots and piece of paper to draw with. 
Uh, the next thing is a nice sharp pair of scissors. Um, this, this brand this, that I've been using here works really well with the leather uh, that I get from Tandy Leather. It doesn't work quite as well on the, on the heavier dark colored leathers. I have to get a, I have a different pair of scissors for that. But something that will cut a nice clean cut through the leather uh, once you've got your pattern made and, and marked up on the leather. Then we're going to, once you've got it cut out, and here's an example of a cut out pattern, is that we've got to punch the holes in it. And you can see two variations of punches I've got here. Uh, this top one is a four hole punch. I, this is the one I like. Um, the, the spacing is a little bit further apart on the uh, on the holes, which I think looks more authentic. But they also sell one that's a, a thinner six hole punch where you'll get a little tighter stitch. It would end up looking more like a ball you've bought from 19C or the Vintage Baseball Factory or whoever you buy from. They use a, a much tighter punch and a much tighter stitch when they do theirs. Um, they hold up well, uh, obviously, but uh, I like the look of, of, the, of this punch because the pictures I've seen of balls from the 1860 time frame, a lot of them have their holes spaced farther apart. So when we get to this point, and then under, underneath here, I'm sorry, underneath here, there's a, I got a small cutting board that I use. And when I'm doing the pounding, I'll put this punch on this piece of leather like this, and then oh, I got this out of the picture here. I use this uh, rubber malleted hammer. Uh, actually, it's a not really rubber; it's a real tough, hard leather. If you use a real regular hammer, and the reason I put this punch here, um, if I can get it in focus here, it it bends the top, and that was no good. So I went to this uh, leather. It's a, a leather punch hammer. It's a real hard nylon type uh, tip there. And I'll punch the holes in the, in the cover using that hammer and that punch. Now here I've got uh, some examples just to show you. Let me turn this. I don't know if that screws up the video. But uh, I've got some different patterns that I've made over the years. Uh, the front one here is 1869. It's a little smaller ball. I don't make too many of those. I just wanted one for my collection. The one underneath that is 1867. There's been quite a few people requesting that. And then I've got a pattern, and these are just both, both made out of a paper or a cardboard. And then this is the 1860 pattern, and it's actually a nice thick piece of wood that we, we had made up once we got our pattern figured out. So we made it out of wood, and that makes it easier to, to trace, the, uh, trace on the leather. The paper's not flying around. So once you get this leather cut um, with just scissors, sometimes these little interior corners are tough buggers. And so we have a... It's a little uh, exacto type knife. Uh, where did it go? It's a little exacto type knife that we use to kind of get in here, and kind of trim that, trim that center out to make sure it's a nice even cut. Then we're going to get into uh, making the rubber band core, and I've got a couple of different rubber band balls I've made here. But I just we buy our rubber bands um, online because we buy them in bulk. We make a lot of baseballs. Um, if you're just going to make a handful or just a couple and you're not interested in making a bunch of them, just go to Staples and buy a bag. It'll cost you about 8 bucks. If you buy them online in bulk, maybe 10 bags, 12 bags at a time, you can get them for closer to 4 to 5 bucks a bag, which is what we do. And then you're just going to wrap and wrap and wrap. And you got I got two examples here, some rubber band balls. This one, a little smaller, I'll use for teams that... Uh, don't want a baseball that flies so far. They maybe they have a restricted field, a uh, short left field, a short right field, or maybe they got water out there and they don't want to hit it into it. So I'll, I'll make a smaller rubber band ball. Otherwise, I'll make a full uh, seven inch circumference type baseball to put in the core, and that ball will fly a long ways. The other thing you'll need is a, a tape measure. These little fabric tape measures work great. You don't need one that goes all the way to 60 inches. It comes in handy when you're measuring for the string, but when you're measuring the baseball, you just want to wrap around the ball to make sure you got the, the right circumference of the ball. So once the rubber band ball is made, uh, we're going to wrap it with yarn. And what I've got here are uh, three different types of yarn. For those of you that have followed my PowerPoint or I've talked to about making baseballs in the past, this is the leather, or the leather, this is the uh, yarn that I've always used and I used exclusively. Um, this is all I used was this, this yarn. Well, over the past year or so I've been experimenting with some other types 
and I think it makes a little better baseball. I think it's gonna the core is gonna last longer. It's gonna hold up better. So I start with this like I always have, and then about halfway through, I'll use this. Uh, it's called a crochet thread. It's real thin, but what it does is it allows me to wrap a real thin layer around the ball about halfway through, and it really tightens everything up in the center. And then I'll bring this back and I'll use this again uh, until I've got about a quarter of an inch to go. Uh, and then I'll bring in this, actually this is 100% wool yarn. Um, and this this will hold up better to the striking of the of the bat. On the outside it, it'll have a better give to it, it won't, it won't stretch and, and give out so much. It, you can't make the whole baseball, well you could. You probably don't want to make the whole baseball out of that wool yarn because that small thing of wool yarn costs more than this big thing of the regular uh, polyester type yarn. So you'd make a very expensive baseball if you did that. You wouldn't. You could do it, but it would just be an expensive ball to make. So when I get into the wrapping of it, I'll get into more details of how I use those. Then over here, I got some. Uh, this is just some uh, athletic tape. The reason that's here is because I have. I sit at a desk all day. I don't use my hands a lot, so I have kind of fingers that don't hold up well to, to labor. So I wrap some athletic tape around my fingers when I'm spinning the yarn around the, the outside of the ball. If you do enough baseballs, and sometimes I'll do four or five at a time, it really digs into your fingers and I've ended up cutting them and they bleed and that's no fun to get on the ball. Uh, so I just do, this is just for me, if you got tough fingers don't worry about it. Got some scissors and some pliers, uh, got some work gloves and some, this is the wax sinew. So let's cover this first. I get this at, at uh, Hobby Lobby just because it's close by and they sell it. It's just as you can see on the cover there, it's a artificial sinew it's a, and it's waxed which makes it real easy when you're uh, stitching the ball, it goes through the holes a lot easier. And this is the same thing, it's just a little different color. I've, I found both of those colors and um, it's what we use to stitch up the ball. So and. So the scissors are to once you measure that to cut it, you need to cut that, uh, and plus you need to cut the yarn from time to time. The pliers will will be handy when you're actually stitching the ball as you're pulling the the yarn or the uh, wax sinew through the holes. There are certain points uh, in making the ball where it's hard with just your fingers to pull it through. Uh, so I'll just grab the tip with those pliers and pull it through. It makes it a lot easier. The, the gloves are kind of the same thing as as the uh, athletic tape. Uh, when you get to the very end of the ball, when you're when you're stitching it up, uh, you find yourself pulling very hard, very tight on that sinew. And that wax sinew, if you pull hard enough, it'll actually slice right through your hand. Um, so on some of those baseballs, when you really got to pull tight, um, I, I slip those gloves on for about four or five of those pulls just to help. Uh, I find that I can close the gaps a lot quicker. This is just some cut up pieces of the sinew. Um, I'm going to pull one of these out. When you get all done with stitching the ball, there'll be a piece left over and it'll look let me get this out of the way here, something like this. And you save this piece because that's what you use to create this. When you're pulling the leather on top of the ball, you want to I pull the pieces together at the top there. And I just use a piece like this to run th to run through the, the top holes here, pull it all tight, and it gets gives me the leather in place so I can then start stitching it up. Oops, I, I know I missed one thing. Let me go back over here. They're hiding the needles. You need these needles. Uh, these are number 18, number 18, 18 needles. Uh, I've tried some other different numbers. If it's smaller than 18, they bust. If it's bigger than 18, they're really hard to maneuver. This, this has worked really well for us. It's number 18, so that's what I'm recommending uh, that you'll stitch the ball with. Uh, before we get to the final ball, uh, this is always handy too. This is my inspiration for making baseball. This is Doc Adams. You can go visit his Facebook page, learn a little bit more about him. But he made baseballs uh, for the New York Knickerbockers and then for other clubs as well. Uh, there's a lot of good information about him. He's very important to the history of our game. Uh, so I use this kind of as my inspiration. And then this is a finished ball. This is what you're going to end up with something like this if you don't use this exact leather. Obviously it won't look exactly like it, but that's the goal, is to end up with a baseball when you're all done with uh, all these different materials. So the next videos I'm going to do, I'll, I'll take each section of the materials here, and then I'll show you uh, the process of making the baseball as we go through this. Um, 
and then hopefully by the time we're done with all the videos, yeah, you'll be able to make your own baseball. So check back for more videos. I uh, just search on how to make a lemon peel baseball. I'll put that in the uh, title of all these different videos. So for now, sayonara, and uh, hopefully before too long, you'll uh, be able to show me pictures of your baseballs.